Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about latches. And not latches that you use to lock up your house. These latches are used to store memory within digital logic. Now, previously, we've talked about flip flops. And flip flops are synchronous ways where we can store binary numbers, i.e., that they only change, the output only change with respect to the input on a clock edge. The difference with latches is they're asynchronous. We don't have a clock edge uh, that we're clocking this in on at. The output changes as soon as the input does. But they also retain memory, so there's typically some feedback happening within these latches. So the output can be stored and it doesn't change when we change the state of our inputs. Now, there's two main latches that we'll have a look at. We've got the set reset latch, so the SR latch, which in some ways is similar to the operation of the SR flip-flop that we previously looked at. We've also got a gated latch, so let's have a look at both of these. Now the SR latch, we've got a couple of different ways we can implement it based on the logic that's available to us. Because we can actually create one of these SR latches from discrete logic elements, from, from just logic gates. And if push came to shove, we could do this. We could wire up a bunch of logic gates and create an SR latch. So the first one we're going to look at is just using all NOR gates. So um, just connecting a number of NOR gates together. And the second one is using all NAND gates. Both are quite valid. And if we had a circuit that only had NOR gates or NAND gates, for example, because remember, both of them are fairly universally applicable, uh, we could create either one of these. So for our NOR gate example, essentially what we do is we cross-couple two NOR gates. So the output of one of the NOR gates goes to the input of the other NOR gate, and the output of the other NOR gate goes to the input of the other NOR gate. And so our Q and Q bar outputs are once again complements of each other. If one's one, the other's going to be zero. And we've got our R and our S inputs there as before. So since we have this feedback going in from our output back to our input, the current state of the circuit is going to influence the next state of the circuit. And this will give the circuit memory. So we can draw a truth table for this circuit as follows if we analyze the memory. Um, obviously, we don't have a clock here because they're latches. We don't have synchronous clocks that are clocking these things in. We, look at it, we can look at our different uh, input configurations. So if our S and R values are both zero, um, the new value of Q and new value of Q bar are going to be the same as the old value of Q and Q bar. So we're going to have no change. If we supply an, a 1 to the value of R, but a 0 to the value of S, what we're doing is the value of Q will be set to 0, and the value of Q bar will be set to 1. And so that's essentially resetting Q, or setting Q to 0. And conversely, and a bit like in the flip-flops for the SR, SR flip-flop that we looked at before, if we set S to 1, and we set R to 0, well, our output's going to be set. Q's going to be set to 1, and Q bar is going to be set to 0. Now, the final one, where they're both set, um, we don't use this. It's actually an invalid state. And um, it won't actually let us use it. Because if we set our R and our S both to 1 here, if we logically go through there, we can't actually get this particular state. It's going to be an errored state as we're trying to set and reset the latch at the same time. So here's a symbolic representation of our NOR latch. Um, note that we don't have any clock input like we would with the SR flip-flop. And there's the states there. So we've got if SR are both set to 0, um, we have no change. If S is 0, R is 1, we, we reset. If, is it, if S is 1, if R is 0, we set uh, the output to high. Next, we have the NAND latch. And um, very similar to before, we have this cross-coupled feedback from the output of one to the input of the other. And we cross them over. And our, our logic is essentially the same, except that our inputs to each of these, our input for S and our input for R, is inverted. So we're, we've got an active low input for each of these. And so our truth table will look very, very similar, but kind of like upside down in that our state that we have to avoid is 0, 0 for our S and R inputs. That's invalid because we've got this inversion to active low inputs. So if our S is 1, if our R is 1, um, we'll have no changes before, and we can step through each of those states. If we wanted to make the NAND latch um, equivalent to the NOR latch, like we had before, 
we could very easily put some inverters on the inputs of each of these and we'll have the same logic levels as our NOR latch. Um, we could use NAND gates that we've learned before to actually implement those inverters as well. Our next latch was the gated latch. In our gated latch we add a pair of NAND gates at the input to control when this latch is going to operate. Because remember we don't have control um, as soon as the input changes the output's going to change. We don't have control over that. This way we can have an enable line where we can essentially say okay now we're going to enable this and allow it to be controlled or disable it conversely. And so we've got, have a, got a truth table that looks like the follows. So if we apply a zero to E, our enable line, um, it'll stop our signals S out bar and R out bar from actually contributing really to the rest of the circuit. They'll just both be one, which is that state where nothing changes. Um, but if we set E to one, well, that will let the signals go through to S out and R out and then we can actually change what's going to be happening with our uh, with the latch and actually control the latch. So essentially that E is acting as an enable and stops those signals from going out or allows those signals to go out. So brief example, um, have a go at trying to complete this yourself before you look at the solution to it. But here's a timing diagram for our SR latch and assume that in our initial state here that our Q value is low and essentially our Q, value, Q bar value will be high conversely. So here we see the solution. Um, as soon as our S goes high, our Q will go high and will go high for a little while. And then when our R value goes high, we set the Q value to low. And likewise when the S value goes high again, our Q will go high again. And you know here we don't put S and R high at the same time because that's an invalid state and one that we need to avoid.